brilliant, brilliant fight. Probably one that was a little bit left field when it was announced, but one that made perfect sense for me. On one side, you had John Ryder, a guy who pushed Callum Smith all the way. Some people believe he should have been crowned world champion in Liverpool. Tony Sims put pressure and pressure and pressure on landing a big opportunity for John Ryder. We talked about the Morel fight. We've talked about a fight with Dimitri Bivol. But when the opportunity came out to fight this gentleman on my right, you know, a true American great in Daniel Jacobs, a two-division world champion, you know, a real ambassador for American boxing, for world boxing, incredible story. This was the fight that made perfect sense. An official eliminator for the WBA Super Middleweight World Championship, a fight that must both guys must win. For John Ryder, it is the big roll of the dice to go on and challenge for a world title. For Daniel Jacobs, an, uh, a trip to the UK which says, I'm here to make a statement to fight John Ryder in his backyard. And we'll start with the two representatives of these guys, Charlie Sims, firstly. I know your dad, Tony Sims, obviously uh, working hard in the gym with the other boys today. But this is the fight that you guys, the kind of fight that you guys put the pressure on for and a massive opportunity for John Ryder at the weekend. Yeah, credit to Danny for coming over. Um, obviously, John's coming off the back of that big Smith fight. He was unfortunate not to get a decision that night. But as we all know, super middleweight divisions now kind of controlled by Canelo. And without getting a world title shot, we wanted to fight the next best fighter in the division. And Danny Jacobs for us is that guy. Obviously, a proud night for you and your dad as well. You're all very close to John Ryder, almost like family. Going to be a great atmosphere in there. It's a really big night for all of you and, and a must-win fight. Must win. John, John wants to go on and win world titles and Danny Jacobs is the man in the way. So John knows that he's got to put a career best performance in to win and that's what he's planning to do. Keith Connolly, my good friend from the States, one of the finest managers in the, the sport, um, came over a, a couple of months ago with Chris Algieri, didn't work out, but it was a big opportunity for him. With Danny Jacobs, again, a lot of these American fighters look forward to the opportunity to fight in the UK. You experienced a little bit of atmosphere that night. It's going to be turned right up, but I get the feeling that you two are really excited by this opportunity of coming in to the backyard and a different kind of challenge that Danny's never had in his career so far. Yeah, we, uh, when you brought up this fight to us and said it would be big in England, we weren't hesitant in at all. We were excited, right, Danny? Absolutely. Um, we jumped at the opportunity, and we love the fans here. That's one of the reasons we came over. Danny and I have been talking for about four or five years about coming over here to fight because of the fans. Mm -hmm. So we love the country, we love the fans, and we're excited for Saturday night. I'll ask Danny this question as well later on, but... I've seen a different kind of Danny Jacobs. We haven't spoke much in camp, but just looking at him, looking at his work back in the old school gym with Scooter, do you feel there's part of him, maybe after the Rosado fight, it's like, I want to prove to people that I'm, a still, I'm still, you know, the real thing at 168 pounds. And was that part of the decision to take this fight and particularly this trip over here? Definitely. We're here to prove a point. He had a tremendous camp. I mean, this is definitely the best camp he's had probably in the last three or four years. Uh, a lot of credit is to Danny, his attitude, but I also want to give credit to Andre Rogier, head trainer, did a tremendous job this camp. Yeah, Anthony yeah. Irons, uh, his assistant trainer, another tremendous job. Obviously, Scooter, he's the best conditioning coach in the world. Scooter worked with Danny tirelessly every single day, uh, and Danny's in tremendous shape. I mean, I'm expecting a huge performance on Saturday, and I think that puts him right back in the mix. Absolutely, and yeah, two great trainers here, Andre. Razier as well, somewhere over there, yeah, Andre, and uh, Tony Sims as well, and of course the legendary Scooter. Where would, where would these guys be without Scooter? Johnny Ryder, um, again, came into the office with Tony, with Charlie, sat down and said, that I need my opportunity, I need a big fight. Doesn't get much bigger than this, a massive fight that's going to be watched all around the world, huge US audience tuning in as well. This is absolute must-win for you at Ali Pali on Saturday night. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's a fight I've been craving for a long time. Um, I know your ears have probably been on fire when the phone's been ringing and Tony's been on the case. But um, listen, you've delivered and what a massive name in the UK and on my doorstep in Ali Pali. Uh, it doesn't get much bigger than this for me. I saw an interview that you, you gave. Some fighters don't like to talk about this, but you said the loser is done on Saturday night. That, that's the pressure that you're putting on yourself to win this fight. I know you want to go on and, and challenge for a world title. You are a slight underdog in this fight, but that is the pressure. You're, you're putting your whole career into this fight on Saturday night and there's no other thing you need than victory. 
at the weekend? No, I mean, at 33, I'm not ready to retire. I want to kick on. I want to have a few more years in this sport and a, a few more years of big fights and, and world title fights and, and getting what I deserve out of this sport. Um, I've been working tirelessly in the gym with uh, the best strength conditioner in the world, Dan Lawrence, um, Tony Sims and Charlie. And I've uh, been lucky enough, obviously, to have the likes of Peter Sims and Kevin Mitchell in the gym, just picking their brains, getting their knowledge. It's, um, it is, like you say, it's a real family affair. I know when you boxed Callum Smith, it was, you know, many people felt it could have gone either way, but you've been waiting for this opportunity for a big fight and almost feel a, a little bit of redemption in this fight and that you've got this opportunity after that Callum Smith fight and you want to grab it with both hands. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it feels like a long time coming. COVID messed things up for everyone massively. Um, so it's, it's about putting things right now. It's been a slow two years, but get back 2022, a good start to the year and really kick on. Daniel Jacobs, welcome. Um, when we started working together, I never thought I'd see you in London at Alexandra Palace. Um, but I'm really, really pleased that you're here. You know, on behalf of you know, all the British fight fans, to bring a name like yourself here is, is a tremendous honour. And I think this is the challenge that you needed in your, in your <laughs> career. You know, I mean, you've, you've achieved so much. Two-time world champion. Of course, huge unification fight with Canelo Alvarez in Las Vegas. Gennady Golovkin fight that you, many thought you won that night. But this is a different kind of challenge. And, and I guess at this stage in your career, you want to win another world title. But was this the kind of challenge that you just thought, you know what, I want to go to London for, for a big fight. And, and that excited you. Well, absolutely. Um, this was an opportunity for me once I got a list of options of opponents to choose from. And to come to England was one of them. I, I jumped right on it. I remember it as an amateur I came over here at 17, 18 years old, had such an incredible experience. I fought in Liverpool, I fought in London, and those memories live with me up until this day. And I always wanted to create more memories for myself as a professional. And so when I got the opportunity, I jumped right on it because I know that the energy and, and the crowd, uh, the people, the fans, just the atmosphere is gonna be one to remember. So I'm looking forward to Saturday night. Uh, may not have everyone, uh, <laughs> you know, in attendance going for me, but it's not nothing that I'm not used to. Uh, I've been in hostile territory before, uh, but good or bad uh, energy, it all works for me and it all motivates me. As long as there are people cheering, enjoying both us guys, put our lives on the line, then I know I'm doing my job. So I appreciate you. There will be a great atmosphere. British fight fans, very knowledgeable. They, they respect you as well at the same time. Did you struggle last time out with, with that lack of energy? You know, I know you, you weren't over the moon with your performance against Gabe Brasado, but it was such a strange environment that people were boxing in as well, wasn't it? You know, you were coming <laughs> off the back of yeah. Canelo Alvarez, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. in, in Phoenix, which was crazy, right, right. into an empty arena. And, and it was flat. One thing it definitely won't be on Saturday night is flat. Yeah, exactly. And so I'm looking forward to a, an amazing atmosphere to go from fighting Julio Cesar Chavez and Phoenix with the sold out crowd from fans screaming, cheering and throwing <laughs> to an empty arena, you know, where I can hear uh, a needle a pin drop. You know, it's kind of an awkward situation. Uh, but ultimately, I know it's up to me to overcome. And it wasn't the best performance, but I look forward to uh, overriding that last performance with this one out. Uh, John Ryder is a motivated fighter. He understands the risk, the task that's at hand. And I'm looking forward to doing my job as well. I'm back with my team. I just want to take my hats off to all my team members for all the things that they do. Uh, Andre, Scoot, all you guys. I love you guys. Mike, Baz, Anthony back at home. This has been a tremendous camp and I'm back in my happy space and uh, I look forward to showing the world exactly what I'm made of. And finally, John puts the pressure on himself to say the loser is done. I guess that's because you guys... <laughs> he can speak for himself on that one. Man. <laughs> this is not done over here. I'm a, you know, I'm a declarated fighter. Uh, one bad performance doesn't define my career. So this whole notion of, you know, my career is done if I don't win this fight. I get that the importance of this fight, which is to put us in back into title condition. But my career is far from over. I have a lot more that I want to continue uh, and, and to accomplish. I want to be able to have that Hall of Fame talk, as me and my trainer always talked about since we first laid uh, our pair of gloves in our first professional fight. 
And so for me, this is more motivation to know that people think this way and so cruel and harsh to fighters with one bad loss. And uh, that's more motivation to me to go inside that ring and to put it all on the line because I understand the importance of this fight and to put me back into the position which I want to create history. Well, tremendous fight. Two great fighters, two great men. Daniel Jacobs against John Ryder, official eliminator for the WBA Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Great card. Felix Cash against Madiev, as we said. Incredible atmosphere for Johnny Fisher against Ungima. Brilliant female fight. Ellie Scottney against Guanin. Of course, Austin Amo Williams, Hopi Price, Cyrus Patterson, and Shiloh DeFreitas as well. Thanks for coming. Of course, the weigh-in tomorrow will be open to all at Box Park. This Saturday night, Alexandra Palace, do not miss it, either in the arena or, of course, live on zone all around the world. Um, we're going to break now for head-to-heads and, of course, all the um, guys and girls up here available to the media here today. Thank you for coming. We look forward to a tremendous show on Saturday night.